the internet for the loop. Okay, folks. What you've all been waiting for. Chris Gow versus Scaruffi. All right. Ultimate critic grudge match here. I mean, not really. This is really more just educational and comparative. Uh, actually, I, I value both these guys. I, I like music reviews and critics and reading about music. It kind of helps me clear up my own thoughts. So here we go. All right. I'm going to do this by category. And uh, I got some post-it notes that are going to help me out. So first thing to understand is pop music. Question mark. All right. Chris Cow values pop music. And Scaruffi has sort of made it his uh, point to... He really, he really has contempt for pop music. And uh, I, I value pop music. Occasionally, I have contempt for elitist music, or at least the attitudes that can accompany it. So I'm not really doing this by points, like officially, but I guess, I guess I'm going to put... I'm in the Chris Cow camp on that one. I like pop music. Boring. Now, I'm not talking about them, because honestly, they're not boring. But like... They have different ideas about what boring music is, you know? And um, for Scaruffi, it's all about innovation. So, like, if, if the music sounds somewhat similar to stuff that's been done before, it's boring. With Chris Gow, it's more... I mean, I guess he has that, too, but it, it seems to be more like um, if, like, a person's essence or worldview or stance is boring, like, that's the, the greater crime. Um... I don't know that I, I, I guess I'm not really in either camp necessarily. I, I, I just like it to be exciting and propulsive, you know? That's, that's what I want. Lyrics. I, so Scruffy is not exactly like a, a native English speaker. I, I, I don't know if he always hears the lyrics or listens long enough to pay attention to the lyrics. Uh, Chris Gow's kind of a lyrics guy, so... I don't know. I feel like Chris Gow is more likely to value like lyrics-driven music. I I'm in the Chris Gow camp on this one. Not that either side is right. It's just you know that's where I am. Next, innovative innovation. Um, these guys have very different takes on this. So for Scruffy, innovation is kind of like, as far as I can see, his his big thing. Like, if music is innovative, then it's then it's good. It's worthwhile. And um, I kind of like that because it's, it's sort of fair, at least theoretically. Like, if you could actually figure out if something is innovative, if it's new, if it's original, um, if you could figure that out, you know, if someone could, like, chart this and provide this information, at least it would be fair, you know? At least you could say, okay, well, this is good because it's innovative, you know? I, I could appreciate that. Chris Cow is more like, um, you know, if an artist is being innovative but he thinks it's not worth doing... And he'll, he'll say that, you know, it's original, but it's not worth it. And um, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'm going to go in the Scruffy camp here. Um, honestly, I, I probably think more like Chris Gow. Like, I don't, I don't seek out stuff just because it's innovative, but it sort of seems at least like you could be objective in some theoretical sense if you're measuring innovation, you know? So I'll give Scruffy the point there, even though, again, we're not. This isn't competition, folks. All right, self-aware. Now, critics are almost like supposed to not be self-aware, like in a, a certain sense. Like they're supposed to like, at least theoretically, they're supposed to have some kind of belief that like they have some kind of objective understanding of music that others don't. But I, I never like this actually. I, I, I want a reviewer who's like self-aware of his or her own biases, you know? Cause like I need to know the person behind the review, you know? And, uh, I think Scaruffi sort of believes that he is the objective, all-understanding listener. And, I mean, I'm sure Chris Gow sort of does too, but I think he at least understands his own personal biases. You know, he hates Prague, or he's not into Prague, or he's not into Irish music, or metal, and stuff like that. Um, I feel like Chris Gow at least can acknowledge the fact that he has biases. I don't know, does Scaruffi do that? I mean, I, if I'm wrong, you can tell me. I don't think he has ever, I don't know, I haven't read every review he's ever made, but it seems like he's not inclined to think about things that way. I think he views himself more as like a machine of music reviews. So I'll put this in the Chris Gow category here. And finally, we have subtleties here, all right? And what I mean by this is, I don't know, I feel like Scruffy is kind of not all that great with subtleties. Like he, um, 
I don't know. I feel like sometimes he, uh, he'll like review an album and he'll just be like, oh, this is embarrassing because it's, it's, it's been done before. But like, he's missing like the little thing that makes it absolutely special or great, you know? Um, like he'll call something embarrassing because it's in the country rock genre. And, but he won't like understand like the, the pronunciation or like the articulation or the, the worldview or the, I don't know, like the, the way the, the vocalist is singing. Like he, he won't acknowledge that because it's, he's already dismissed it as not being innovative, you know, or not bringing music forward. And like, I kind of listen for those like exact, precise subtleties, especially for voc with vocalists, you know? So I don't know. I feel like Chris Gale is more likely to, to base his review on those subtleties. So I, I, I got to put this in his, in his category as well. So I don't know. I guess um, I didn't quite realize that this was going to be like a, like an actual matchup. I guess I fall in the, uh, in the Chris Gow camp here. Um, you know, it's funny. I, one more thought on Scruffy. It, he tends to give like artists initial albums, like early albums, like the best scores. And in some cases to like a, a, what I see is almost like bizarre degree, you know, where it's like, no one thinks that's their best album. Like, like no one on earth, like this band's fans, like the mountain goats, you know, like pretty sure he gave their first album like, their best score or at least close to it, you know? And I'm almost thinking like, does he view the first album as just the greatest step forward in innovation? So like after that, they're just copying themselves, even if they're perfecting themselves and getting better, like he just views it as like a, a lesser innovation that's been brought to the world. I don't know. I, I don't really, I can't view like music like that. You know, if it's better, it's better, you know? But anyway, that's it. Hopefully that, uh, I don't know, enhances your understanding. Cause like you gotta understand the reviewer. I don't agree with these people all the time. I actually love Skrofi. He, he definitely lost in my battle here, but honestly, the, the, <laughs> the amount of stuff he's reviewed is amazing. But you need to know the people and uh, there you are. I hope you enjoyed it. All right, bye-bye.